They don't know, they don't, they don't know, they don't, they don't know, they don't know, they don't, they don't know, they don't, they don't know, they don't know. What's up, world? It's your girl Brittany, and today I'm here with the El Presidente himself. El Presidente. Rico Love, what's going on? I'm good, how you doing? Good. They don't even know that I share you with my wifey. They don't know, they don't, they don't know. Um, wait, so it was yesterday that you dropped El Presidente. Or was it Monday? Monday. I enjoy it thoroughly. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like it. This is like, kind of like a different side of you, though, kind of. It's not really a different side of me. What a lot of people don't know is I started off as an MC. I, you, I really honestly did not a know that. A lot of people don't know that. So I started off, that's how I got my, you know, that's how I got in the game. I was signed to Usher as a rapper. I used to perform on the on the tour. If you look up, you know, Usher, Rico, Love, you'll see me performing in Puerto Rico in front of 30,000 people, rhyming a verse to a song I wrote to, on Throwback. I wrote Throwback on Usher's Confessions album. And I started off, I was his artist. I ended up writing songs, and then I developed a, a vocal ability. I taught myself how to sing, so that I would start, you know, singing as well. But um, when I decided to do the EP, I sang on, on a record I feel like should be the first single, which is They Don't Know, and it's doing extremely well at radio. So a lot of people are like, this R&B crooner, Rico Love, and I'm like, oh shit. They Don't Know is literally all over the fucking radio. Yeah. The ladies really Not love that song. Really. It's like sexy and it's like... They really get it. And I think um, discretion is a, is a lost art. And they don't know applies to so many things. A lot of people are like, oh, he did an anthem for the side pieces. It's not really an anthem for the side pieces. It's really celebrating discretion. It's celebrating the fact that we've become, we've grown into this world, this society where you can't even buy a woman a gift without her putting on Instagram five minutes later. And like, <laughs> look what he bought me, or so look what. True. It's like, where, where's the exclusivity in anything? It's so impressed with showing off, and they're really just trying to impress other women. And they don't know it's really a reflection of. Let's just appreciate each other, let's appreciate this relationship without sharing every detail of it with the world. Mm -hmm. Honestly, they don't know comes from the concept of the fact that I wrote so many records for people and they don't know, which is fine. Like a lot of people don't know I wrote these songs, but if it makes you want to buy the record more, if you think that Beyonce wrote it, I'm fine with that. Right. Me and Beyonce know. Me and Usher know. Me and Kelly Rowland know. So basically the woman in the visual, if you've seen the video, I'm not in the video, but the woman represents the artist that I write records for and how we have this secret relationship. And at the end you see my arm on the shoulders to show this partnership, this companionship that we have. Right. Me as a songwriter. And I want to make it clear that I'm not one of those artists who like, I wrote a bunch of records and I'm, they need to know who I am. Let me do an album. Nah. I love the fact that they don't know. I love that discretion. <laughs> I think that I, I definitely, people, we need to turn the lights on and everything I wrote, you know, that right. I wrote it and produced it, but I, I don't go out of my way to try to, you know, I, I've watched people say they wrote songs that I've written. I've watched artists who I've written songs for say that they wrote my song. Mm -hmm. I could have got on Twitter the next day and said, ah, you didn't write that. For what? It's a part of the game. Right. And I respect that part of the game because some fans really want to believe that their favorite artist wrote the song. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. I think that's kind of the struggle with hip hop is, you know, in the early days, they prided themselves on being so authentic and Absolutely. real. So when you start getting the wool pulled over your eyes, it, yeah. you get it upset ruins, it and ruins. it ruins the... Yeah, it ruins the hype. That's why you got to keep it a buck. And on all things, you just got to always keep it a buck. And that's why you got to respect certain artists. When people, uh, somebody got upset with me to, um, when, when this girl said, why Drake say he a real nigga? He ain't no real nigga. <laughs> I said, Drake is the realest nigga. Right. Because he only raps about things that's real and true to him. Mm -hmm. You don't hear Drake talking about he gonna run in your house and shoot it up. You hear a lot of guys saying that, and I know for a fact they won't. But Drake says, he's emotional. I love this girl. I broke up with her. She broke my heart. I'm getting money. These niggas is hating on me. I'm making the best music. I'm making better music than everybody. These are all facts. Right. So at the end of the day, he is the realest. The realest. When did you start honing your craft as far as like a vocalist? Um, I used to write songs and um, I would have people demo them for me. Okay. And what happened was I wouldn't get the song place. So I was like, they're not giving me the emotion. They're not really belaying the emotion I need. Even though they was amazing singers who would demo the songs for me. So um, I just started singing them myself and I taught myself how to sing. So if you do something every single day, obviously I, have a, I had a tone already. So it was like I had a decent tone. Mm -hmm. but I taught myself how to really sing by doing it for years and, you know, three, four years in the booth every day singing. You kind of get good at it. So we had 
Tierra Thomas come in here. Mm -hmm. uh, the extremely beautiful and talented Tierra Thomas. And she was just talking, she praised you so much for <laughs> helping her hone her craft and understanding her vision of what she wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, when you see like an artist, what exactly do you focus on? And you're like, you know what, Like I need them like on my team, on my squad, or at least I want to help them go to the next place. I only want to be involved. I only want Division One to be involved with artists who I believe in. So millions and millions of albums and touch people with their music. Right. I, I don't, I'm not interested in signing artists because of a one hit or because of I believe this song might work and they might not. I believe if with no song, without no any hit, if I would have saw her play, if she would have been doing cover songs for me, I would have signed her mm -hmm. because it was something about her. There's something about how honest and pure she was with her music and the fact that I had never seen anything like that. People have been getting on Kanye because he like he makes these like really grandiose statements that people think are inappropriate and i'm just trying to tell people like i feel like people are uncomfortable with individuals verbalizing their dreams if it's not in the context that they're comfortable with them do you we were programmed as a as a society to think little of ourselves and we disguise it with this thing called humility mm -hmm. that's a word that was given to us to make us feel like um I'm not supposed to say this, I'm not supposed to be this, because that's not humble. Mm -hmm. But when you believe something, if, if right now a white man got up on a stage and said, Kanye West is the Walt Disney of our time, the entire room would start clapping and say, yes. If Kanye West says it, he's arrogant. Mm -hmm. It's because we've been programmed to think little of ourselves. If he doesn't say that, who's else is gonna, who else is gonna say it? If he don't speak that, who else gonna do it? He has to. Right. And we gotta change our way of thinking. Like we, especially as black men, mm -hmm. he's supposed to say that. I'm Walt Disney. Yeah. When he right. said, when he, I'm Tupac. Yeah, I'm supposed to say that because who else gonna say it? I need to speak this. And I gotta tell myself every day in the mirror that I'm the shit because when I leave home, it's gonna be a million motherfuckers telling me I'm not. I tell my son he's beautiful, he's amazing, he's smart, he's brilliant every day. Uh -huh. I make that embedded into his, to his brain. Because when he walks outside my house, there's gonna be a million people telling him he not. Right. He gotta believe that so much so with nothing they tell him that can stop him. And if we don't get out of that way, of, if we don't get out of that small-minded way of thinking, I'm telling you, they pacify us. They give us small accomplishments. They give us these little money and they make us feel like we should be satisfied with it. You not, you should never be satisfied with it. I overheard somebody saying, why he got, he got all that money, why he complaining? Because he not you, you regular. <laughs> You happy with mo small success? Did you say that he's out not, loud? I don't get into people's okay. business. Okay, <laughs> that's what just what you would think. Yeah, you, he don't get in. He's 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 like not content with that. And I respect the passion, and I respect him giving a fuck instead of you seeing a bunch of rappers who only talk about smoking and being in the club and fucking bitches, and then y'all be like, oh, that's stick to that. Let me tell you something very real and raw. When when athletes. Um, when athletes uh, get successful, a lot of athletes, they're known for dating white women after they become successful. Now, me personally, I don't, I don't date white women, so I'm not trying to say it like myself, but I don't think any wrong, anything wrong with dating white women. Anyway, if I found the white women I really like, I would date her. But, because I don't see race. But, when you go into these different lifestyles and these different cultures, and I'm saying certain instances, so I'm not trying to say all instances. When you, um, you go and you go to a family reunion with your black girlfriend, who you love, who's amazing, and I love black women. Let me just say this now so people won't twist what I'm saying and try to say, Rico loves us, he don't like black women. <laughs> you know, that's how people are. Yeah. But if you go to these family events, the cousin, the uncle, the aunt, they come to you and they say, hey man, invest in my record company. Hey man, I got a rapper, come sit down with me. <laughs> hey, can you get some money to this? Hey, can you sign this for my son? Hey, can you do this, this and that? Can you come to this event so I can get some money? Can right. you give me some money? Man, you got all that money, you should do this. And then you go to the white girl's family, and then they say, hey man, I got my dad, he can uh, hook you up with this banker who can put you in a position to do this. Or I can sign you up for this so you can invest your money and make more money. Or I can do this for you and, and grow you and help you do this and this, this and that, right? Mm -hmm. So you'll be like, damn, I'm over here and they accepted me and not using me. Well, they're using you in a different way. No, yeah, exactly, but at least it's not the, the, 
I feel abused. You, yeah. we all are being used. I'm signed to a record company, and I do it as I'm signed, even though I'm signed to myself. Right. I'm being used to do something, and then I'm using them to do something. It's all. Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna be used, it needs to be a beneficial for equal each party. We all are being used. Right. But at the end of the day, this is what happens in the fashion world as well, and in the culture when it comes to Kanye and what he's doing. When you come to this side, the people that you grew up with, the people that you love the most, the people that you want to change, they shun you. They talk shit about you at every turn. They bring you down, they tear you down like a motherfucker. And then you go over here and they accept you. And then people are upset, they were like, why the fuck you don't come back here no more? It's like, damn, I don't really think you understand what I have to go through when I come here. Mm -hmm. So what I think is important is for us to understand, to build each other up. Don't miss this end part. Don't miss what I'm saying. I think it's important for us to build each other up. A lot of people, even in their small way of thinking, will listen to what I just said. And the only thing and they'll take out of it, in. only thing they'll take out of it is the part where he said, Yo, the black family black and the white family. <laughs> he or he said white people better than black people, and that's not, and that's what happens every no, time. But we're broken. We're a broken community. Absolutely, and that's what happens every time Kanye speaks. What up? What up? It's Rico Love, Mr. Turner Lights, and you're watching Global Grind TV. TTLO.